Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. We're gonna talk about supply chains today. We're gonna to talk about the decoupling that's possibly happening right now between the US and China as we're seeing more and more tensions between China, Russia, and the United States. We're gonna talk about blockchain technology and a possible solution to it because you guys know that I really like blockchain technology. So let's dive into the story right here. And this is out of the South China Morning Post. <laughs> interesting way of getting news to us, right? And we're gonna talk about it. It says, US importers shipping more to America's East Coast ports than West Coast amid global supply chain shifts. It says right here, American containerized imports from China have also been surpassed by the rest of Asia in another sign that diversification and decoupling are occurring. It also says uncertainties during pandemic fueling shifts and could lead to infrastructure revamp of epic proportions. Now check this out. This is really, really interesting to me. And why is it interesting? Because it is going to affect all of us, all of us here in America, uh, Canada, matter of fact, all over the world. As this decoupling happens and global trade is moving from one country to the other, like where China used to uh, supply this, this, and this country, in the next year or two, you're gonna see them supplying this, this, and this country. Well, what happens during a shift like that, a seismic shift in the supply chain? Well, you could see shortages. As a matter of fact, you know, we've seen all the time uh, in the past where people become very enraged, where their favorite, uh, I don't wanna paint any names, but like, let's say a designer handbag company or designer dress company, uh, all of a sudden you find out that those, uh, those clothing items weren't necessarily made in the country that you thought, and that they were possibly made by child labor or, you know, a slave labor or that. We've seen it in the diamond industry where um, companies have been called out in in the past for taking those uh, diamonds out of the ground or even gold, silver, all this stuff, and, and they could have been doing it under really harsh conditions, right? And then they try and cover it up. It's the like age old story of cover ups. Like this is, you know, 100% pure from this country. And then you find out it's not pure and it's from another country, right? Well, blockchain's gonna solve that. But in these shifts, there is more and more of an outcry for people to understand where their goods uh, came from and have that reassurance, right? But let's talk about this because uh, these are the news stories that are going to increase this technology. It says in October, 2021, US President Joe Biden announced that the California ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach were switching to a 24 hour, seven day a week schedule to clear a months long snarl supply chain bottlenecks caused by the global coronavirus pandemic. Compounded by unexpectedly high consumer demand had created a five lane maritime traffic jam. As 2022 dawned, the 109 vessels idled at the port of Los Angeles waiting to dock and offload. But a year later, the traditionally busted ports of LA and Long Beach were confronting a lull of different, uh, different sort, significantly fewer containers being delivered to California. Now, let me stop there real quick and explain something else that's really interesting. You know, it was first come, first serve, essentially. All these uh, ships, there was video everywhere about, um, uh, you know, helicopters flying over and just want 100 uh, ships, container ships, just trying to get into that port of Los Angeles to offload their goods. And it was first come, first serve. Why? Because they got to dump those loads possibly put a little bit on, but they weren't really, and steaming full steam ahead back to China to get another load, right? And that's another thing that blows me away with the supply chain, where there were some uh, ships that had things that were expiring, right? Food products, things like that. And without a proper documentation, and sure, they would try and get them in, but there was so much of that cargo that went completely spoiled, right? Another thing a blockchain can solve. It says right here, after moving records of volumes of uh, cargo during the pandemic, the port of Los Angeles last August lost its 22 year title as the busiest port in the US. Vanquished by its East Coast rival, the joint port of New York and New Jersey, the watershed month marked the New York and New Jersey's busiest since August of 1956, having moved over 843,000 cargo containers, right? It says right here, Experts say several factors accounted for the shift. Amid fresh memories of supply chain bottlenecks during the pandemic's darkest days, businesses were diversifying their supply chains to reduce the reliance on one country and one port. If you think about it, as this gets worse, the problem gets worse, you're going to see supply chain shifts even more from just the port of Long Beach or Los Angeles over to New Jersey, New York, right? You're seeing geopolitical events 
happening between Russia, China, the US, the Eurozone, and uh, there are seismic shifts happening, right? So what's something that's really, really important here? Look, you guys know that I am a big fan of blockchain technology and not the blockchain technology that's keeping NFTs of crazy cartoon monkeys and charging people stupid amounts because they think it's rare. Sure, everything's rare. I could take that, or watch this, here. Only McDonald uh, cup in the world to be licked by the ninja. There you go, I'll sell this thing online. Who wants that? Now let me explain really quick what I mean by blockchain tech being able to solve this. Let me explain this in the, in the most simplest terms. Blockchain technology is a technology that ties multiple computers together all around the world to verify transactions or items, okay? So let's say there is a, a special code, a uh, QR code or any kind of different code, hologram code, and it, it is put onto a piece of art or sewn into a piece of art, it's put onto an item, uh, a piece of food, uh, let's just say gold or silver, right? That came out of a mine in the Congo. It now is attached to a blockchain technology, a software that is shared amongst many computers around the world. These computers are all running this same code. And what they do is they verify where that gold came from out of the Congo, where it traveled to next, and then where it went to next and possibly the, the, where it went to be smelted, where it's purity and all that stuff. And it's literally like a digital ID for the transmission or the movement of that gold all throughout the supply chain. You could do it with all kinds of different things, but let's focus on precious metals, diamonds, things like that, right? You could actually be able to verify when it gets into your hands, go online and verify where that diamond, where that ounce of gold came from, what part of the world and where it went through its process process of getting uh, schmelted and uh, refined into what it is now in front of you. And the cool thing about blockchain tech is because it's tons of computers around the world, it is less vulnerable, it is less vulnerable to hacks because all of the computers have to agree where that came out of the ground, where it went down the highway, what ship, what schmelter. So I think that's very, very important. So let's talk about today's uh, sponsor and this is exactly what they're doing. And I think it's actually really neat. And that's Mine Hub. And I'm gonna give you the ticker. We'll throw up the tickers, uh, both Canadian and the OTC, but they sponsored this video today. And I think this is really neat because you're going to see this technology be used in all kinds of applications. And it's not just food, it's not just m mining, uh, things like that. But I think it's very, very important that we talk about this because as this technology comes out, I want you to be more aware of it so that you're more likely to be able to engage that information, look at the possibilities, and quite frankly, the opportunities are out there, all right? So with that being said, I can't just do everything off the top of my head. <sighs> Give me a second. <sighs> Editor. You've been really good to me, I'm not gonna lie. You've been really good. I need some really, really good notes, okay? So package them whichever way you want. I need them. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about Minehub. Okay, Ninja, and consider this as an early Christmas gift as well. A few minutes later. It's a, it, it's a high-end hair dryer. What are you trying to tell me? It's up to you to figure that out. All right, let's see what, let's see what's. All right, here we go. All right, guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about MindHub. MindHub Technologies, the ticker on the OTC is MHUBF, and the ticker on the TSX Venture Exchange is MHUB. So a couple things that I wanna bring up, and they have a great website. I encourage you to go take a look at it. I'll put the link below. But it talks about blockchain platforms and how they can transform the supply chain and how they keep track of everything from, and in this instance, it could be purity of, uh, purity of the metal itself, um, where it's transported, where it was found, all of that stuff, right? And it can solve a lot of problems for mining companies that are trying to track their goods as they leave the mine, all right? Now it says MineHub is an enterprise blockchain platform transforming the performance of global supply chains. It says blockchain powered solutions bringing the efficiency, security, and transparency to the management industrial supply chains. Very, very important. You know, something that um, I've seen in the companies that I've worked with is you can lose products 
very fast. Like, let's just talk about the construction industry. Do you know how many construction companies have to have some type of system, like a, a barcode scanning system, just for their tools because of a uh, loss where employees just walk away with them, or literally they just forget them on a job, they drop something or it gets damaged, and they need to be able to figure out where their tools went, right? Well, that's the construction industry. Can you imagine a mining company that's pulling gold and silver, platinum, palladium, rhodium, whatever, cobalt, nickel, copper out of the ground? It gets sent somewhere. They want to make sure, hey, we know how much we sent you. We had we ran it through all of the machinery here, got it as, you know, perfectly set up as possible, but we sent you this much, you know. 10,000 ounces, a million ounces on this date, and we expect that to come back. And think about how much money can be saved and how much transparency is, not just on the retail side for the person buying the finished goods, but also for the company not to lose it. It says right here, they reduce cost, control risk, and improve revenue and optimize resources by leveraging data, analytics, digitizing workflows, and centralizing communications. It says here, the supply chain resilience is more important than ever, and they show a, a chart from CNBC stating that there is a historical link in the impact of a disrupted supply chain and the creation of a mass inflation event. And you could see by this chart, episodes of US inflation, and it says the consumer price index percent change from a year ago. And you could see those massive, massive swings all the way back to the 1950s, and yes, when inflation's involved and supply chains are getting disrupted, it can swing prices wildly. But you know, one thing that can help that is when a company or an industry could say, yes, um, the, literally, like when we were watching prices explode on goods and services here in America, was, ah, all the lumber's gone. Can you imagine if you knew, or Home Depot could put it out and say, um, actually the lumber's on the truck and it's gonna show up to your, your uh, local Home Depot literally on this day. So if you're freaking out today, don't worry, it'll be there actually tomorrow at 8.30. And they know that because of real-time data that they can pull. So they can actually have that on the front side of the uh, Home Depot. Don't worry. And think about this, where Home Depot would uh, help. They had this kind of information. Someone walks in and goes, where's your two by fours? I need some two by fours. I want, I want to build me a, a new pen for my go. And he walks right out of Home Depot and he goes down to Lowe's and goes and buys two by fours. But if there is, if there is a, a sign right there that says, uh, real-time data shows that two by fours are being delivered in two hours. Well, he might go, that gives me enough time to go get me a new cheeseburger. I'll wait and come back. And they actually save a customer from leaving to go to another store. Think about this. This is the kind of stuff that I think is really interesting. It says right here, MindHub has collaborated with world-class companies to develop a platform with the functionality and utility industry uh, needs and wants. And that includes large companies like BHP, ING, Capstone, I know there's some more that I got to add to that in a second, but I want to go over a couple other things. And you know what? Actually, there is. There's a, there's a, there's something missing here. Okay, this is weird. Uh. So this is how you get me notes now. There is a limited amount of cardboard in here. What do you want me to do? All right. So yeah, there was another story, and this was something that just came out. Here it is. Published, uh, what, January 17th, MineHub Corporate Update. It says right here, 2022 was a pivotal year for the company as it signed its first commercial agreements with major global customers, BHP, a market leader in the mining industry, started using the platform in business operations after several successful trials. In addition, sum, 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 no. all right, I may need help, editor. So, A E I O. You know, the ninja in pronunciation. Sumitomo. 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 Corporation of Japan, which plays a central role in the global copper industry, also started with a commercial with commercial shipments across the Mine Hub platform. So, guys, I think I'm the first uh, person on YouTube to actually talk about this company. I think. Um, I could be wrong, but this is new. Like they're just now starting to work with these large companies and they're starting to get out there. So a couple things also I wanted to bring up, and this is something that I look at um, I, when I'm, I'm looking at stuff, is market cap. Right now, the stock, fully diluted when you're accounting for uh, the shares, options, and warrants, and you add those all up, the fully diluted uh, share count right now is right under 90 million shares. When you take that and multiply that by the Canadian price, I'm going to be talking about Canada, eh? 
That was horrible. That's horrible. I didn't mean that. I just, I just watched a lot of Strange Brew as a kid. The market cap comes to just over 23 million Canadian. So the question you'd have to ask yourself is, well, how big can a company like this grow? How many companies are using blockchain technology to help companies track everything about their material that they're getting out of the ground? That's the question. We've seen blockchain technology companies go huge. I just, that's a question I don't know. I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a financial professional, but I am very interested in this industry. And this is something I think that you should be watching for, looking at, what's the possibilities? At $23 million market cap in, in uh, Canadian terms, how much bigger can this get? You know, really the sky's the limit because there's not a lot of companies out there doing this. And I think that is very, very interesting. So guys, I wanna thank MindHub for, uh, uh, sponsoring this video. Thank you so much. You keep me coming out here and, and being able to do this and report the news on finances. But I also really want to encourage people to keep their eye out for blockchain, positive, good blockchain uses. And no, 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 not NFTs of a bored ape. I just, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been on my pedestal for like a year and a half talking about two years saying it's not going to work. It's not going to last. But the real use for NFTs and blockchain to record things are happening right now. All right, with that being said, I thank you so much for watching. Ow.